Hey, this is Jamie from Stillmeyer Games, and today I'm going to talk about my favorite mechanism in the game Schadenfreude. A little card game. Let's see it right here. Uh, it's a little trick-taking game. You can see the components in the box here, where you are trying to finish in second place. Uh, this is the interesting twist to the game in multiple ways. I really like how they implemented this in multiple ways, although there's one way that I like a little bit more than the other. Um, one of the ways is that whenever you play a, uh, a trick, um, you say I lead with this green two, someone else plays a red three, and yes, that is a negative three, and then someone else plays a green seven, and let's make it a four player hand. Um, and someone else plays a green five. I led with the green two, so a green card needs to win this trick, but it isn't, like in many trick taking games, it isn't the highest card that wins the trick, rather it is the second highest card. And so the player, who played, uh, who played the five in this case, would win this trick, and then they would win some of these cards. They would win, uh, they would earn the card, oh, I have to remember this correctly, but I believe they, they earn the card that they used, and, uh, and any card that's off suit, they take those cards. I might have that wrong, but I know they're taking the off suit cards. Uh, this in itself is an interesting twist. It's, it's not, it's my, actually my second favorite interesting twist in the game. Um, uh, in that the, the player who wins the trick is not the highest player in the trick. It is the second highest card played on suit. That in itself is interesting. It's a little hard to control um, because you never really know if you're going to be the, the, the second highest card. Although, and I think if I played this game a few times, I would understand that it is very similar to other tricky taking games. Okay, it's just that you care more about the second highest card than the highest card. The biggest twist, though, related to this mechanism is how you win the game because it is not... The player who uh, has the most points at the end of the game, <clears throat> and that is the player who crosses 40 points first. You have this little score track built from cards. The player who crosses 40 points will trigger the end of the game, but that player doesn't win. It is the second highest player, the player with the second most points, who does not cross 40 points, who wins the game. And so this creates a very interesting puzzle throughout the game in which you want to get points. You want to get as many points as possible, just not more than 40. And so, especially early on in the game, you start with zero points, and so you uh, you want to get a ton of points as, as fast as possible. But then as you get closer to 40, you stop wanting to take points. Uh, you want to slow it down. Your opponents are then trying to give you points while still trying to take some points of their own to get high enough. That, I thought, was a really interesting element of the game. It's a great catch-up mechanism. It's a great little twist. Like the, I like games with a good turning point somewhere in the game, and this has a good turning point. You're trying to get points and suddenly you're not trying to get points. Really neat twist there. And so I like, I do like to how that the designer incorporated this second place mechanism in more than one way, both in terms of the tricks that you're taking and the end game scoring, but I think it works particularly well for the end game scoring. One other thing that I want to mention real quickly, I won't go too much in detail, but the idea of points in this game, the points that you earn are from the cards that you gain. So that's why this, this rule is a little important, whether or not you're actually taking this five or not. Um, but you're definitely taking this three because it was off suit. And this is negative points. Um, so this is a way to actually lose points in the game, which isn't always a bad thing given the second place mechanism. The twist to this, though, is that, say, on a previous round, I had won... A, uh, if we can find an example here, I had won another negative three. So I've, I've, I already have a negative three in my tableau. I've won this card. And I, if I win another negative three, they cancel each other out. And so this can be good or bad. The, for these negative points, depending on the time of the game, can usually be good if I can win another negative three because then I get to toss both these cards. But sometimes you've earned a lot of points. I've earned a seven. And then I don't want to take more sevens, unless it would have me cross 40, but generally you want the points. I, I don't want to take another seven because it would cancel these points out. I thought that was a really clever mechanism. There are very specific cards that you want to avoid, um, and sometimes that you want to take if you want to cancel out negative points. That I thought was interesting as well. But yeah, this whole second place mechanism, really interesting. I'm curious if you can think of any other games where you want to finish in second place rather than first place, and second place ends up being the winner of the game. Let me know about that in the comments below or if you have any other thoughts about Schadenfreude. Thanks.